Today, we are going to be talking about the pin drafter. The pin drafter is a necessary stage that we have to go through here at the mill for us to spin fiber into yarn. Hey, we're Chris and Teresa, and we would love to guide you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill and online needle felting business, experienced at raising all fiber animals, and have renovated a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and sustainable agriculture are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things from farm to needle. So so pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. Hi, I'm Chris Armbrist with Shepherd Industries, and today we are going to be talking about pin drafting, a necessary step as we spin uh, fine fibers into amazing yarn here at Shepherd Industries. So this pin drafter is, oh my goodness, it's probably the late 1950s model. Um, they don't make pin drafters like this anymore. It, it looks like it's been around the block a couple times, but it is a workhorse. It, um, it's not electronic. It is just done with gears and, and combs like this. We have metal combs, very, very sharp, very, very fine tooth combs. And there's combs that go this way, and there's combs that go that way. The fiber passes through. It pulls the fiber through both sets of combs, one going this way, one going that way. And as it does that, it drafts it, meaning it takes, I'll show you here. If you're interested in how we made this roving here at the mill, go back to our, our last episode in the series on carding. Okay, so here we have our roving. And in order for us to spin it on our spinner, it's much too thick. It's, it needs to be drafted. It needs to be um, thinned. So it needs to be about half the diameter that it is right now. Also, if you see some of these fibers are, are, they're pretty much aligned, but we need every fiber going in the same direction. So what this machine does as it pulls it through these combs, it, is drafting it so it's pulling it thinner like this in a nice even manner so that when it comes out the other end it's it's half half the diameter as when it went in it it drafts it times four and in and and in order to best explain that is if you have roving this thick you run i'm going to run two of these through two sets of roving through at the time and as it exits that side it will be in half the diameter will go from this to this and you will see that and while it does that there right now there is is a a stripe of the sari silk which there again check out the carding in our series to, to find out how we did that. So what that's going to do is evenly spread that out through the roving. So when we spin it, there is going to the, the, the little neps, the little colors, the, the texture will be evenly distributed in the yarn. So let's go ahead and get this machine started. I have one pile up here. It's approximately 18 yards and I've taken another pile that I will take off the carter here and put it up here and another 18 yards. So I'm going to take the two ends, give them a slight twist like this, run it through this first into this, this, this chamber that directs it into these two guides that I can open up. It's a pretty basic machine. I've got two speeds that I can run it at. I've got a speed that I use for weak wool, and then I've got a speed that I use generally for alpaca, um, wools with alpaca that pulls a little quicker. And, and this one, we have it on the wool speed because of the percent of wool that's in this, in this fiber. So I tuck it in between these two guides and then I'm just going to get it started. I'm going to get it fed into the, into the comb. So I'm going to turn it on just for a little bit. 
Now it has exited the other end of the machine of the pin drafter. So I'm going to close this guide up until it's about half of an inch wide. And I'm going to give this fiber, these two rovings, a little twist and a little slack here. And now I'm going to jump to the other end and feed it down into the barrel that it coils it into, into the coiler. Okay. So now I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to use this pipe cleaner to wrap it around the edge, the end of the roving to feed it down into our coiler. And then I'm going to put this, this drum that has a big spring in it. And then this plastic top has, has these tiny little spikes. And what this does is it goes down like this and the spring pushes up against the roving, the coiler, and, and, and it pulls it. And while it does that, while it's turning, it wraps it into a coil. And we'll show you what that looks like after it's done. So first step is getting it down into the coiler. So here's our, here's our roving. Let's, let me show you what I started with. I don't know if you can get a good look. It's about half the size. Well, it is half the size of, of the original roving that we put in. And you can also see the original roving has a stripe down the middle of it. Whereas now these little flecks are throughout the roving and we're gonna run it back through here a second time and they will really be evenly distributed throughout the roving. So now we're going to, I'm gonna go ahead with my foot and push this barrel in, tuck the roving down in here and get it set. Here's the little end and you'll see as this goes around, you'll see this end come around. Now I'm gonna turn it back on. And there's that end. Um, this is one of the noisier machines. It's just the, the combs, the metal combs, click, 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 dropping as they, as they rotate around. So I'm not gonna talk when it's on, so I'll be talking over it. But um, some issues that happen. This is where static really plays a role because if there's any static, if the humidity is, is below, is around 60, 50%, this top roller right here, the fiber is going to want to stick on it and then it'll break and wrap around this, ro this, this um, roller. So what I use is, this is cornstarch. Cornstarch is an anti-static. So I will, as it's running, I will, I will rub cornstarch onto the roller, which helps for the static. Like that. It's very safe to touch this, this top roller. Um, you don't want to get your fingers on this side because those combs are so sharp, they will grab you and just suck your fingers right in there. You don't want to get your finger down in here because it can suck your hands down in there. Um, but otherwise, it's a fairly uh, simple, uh, not complicated uh, piece of equipment. And it's a workhorse. It's meant to be to run... 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It, it is built very, very well. Um, the combs are made of metal. And every now and then we have to take them out because fiber eventually, I will show you one, will wrap around it like this. So then we have to take it off and we have to clean by hand this fiber off from around the combs. It just builds up on there. And then we just pull that off and then they're clean again. Um, we do oil 
the combs on either end as so that they, they move freely. Um, there are some grease zerks on here that, that of course need to be, need to be greased, um, but otherwise it's, it's a fairly easy, easy machine to maintain and, and run. It, it, there has been days where I've been standing here for eight hours solid if it's a batch that maybe has a little bit of scurf, a little bit of uh, fiber dandruff in it that likes to stick to the roller. So I'll have to stand here and knock it off. I'm gonna show you now what it looks like when it comes out of the coiler. All right, so here we have what it looks like when it comes out of the coiler. As you can see, it, it, it coils it into a coil and it, and it just continues to wrap it up. And, and it's so, you can see all the fibers are going in the same direction. Those little flecks are much more evenly distributed throughout the roving. And this, all this roving needs to go back through here for one more pass, because it needs to be thinner even than this. So it needs to, I will run two piles back through and all these little flecks will be nicely evenly distributed. And then we're gonna go ahead and spin this into a beautiful uh, sport weight to DK weight yarn. So that's the pin drafter.